Good afternoon and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I'm so glad that you took time out of your day to join us in our look at the Psalms. Now today I'm departing from looking at the Psalm for the upcoming Sunday in order to reflect on the Psalm for today, Thanksgiving Day 2020. And of course, this Thanksgiving Day is very different for many of us than it has been in years past. My own plans for the day were changed last week when Bruce's cousin called to say that because of his health, it probably wasn't a good idea for us to come up to visit them for dinner. And although we were disappointed, we certainly understand and shared their hesitancy. And I know many of you are in similar situations. And sadly for some of you, well, you may be facing a Thanksgiving with an empty chair that used to belong to a loved one who is no longer with you this year. Whether it's from COVID or some other cause, the holidays intensify the grief that is always present to some degree. Thanksgiving is a good day to reflect on those types of things. People we've loved who no longer are with us, but for whom we give thanks. Things we used to be able to do that we no longer can. I think authentic thanksgiving can only be done when we acknowledge how God has gotten us through tough times and we look forward to better days ahead. Because it's easy to be thankful for the easy stuff, the blessings of our own health and that of the people in our lives, a roof over our heads and food on our table. These things are easy to be thankful for. But what about those other times? Times of loneliness, times of uncertainty, times of struggle. The psalm appointed for today, Psalm 126, speaks to this. Listen to how the psalmist rejoices in the blessings given while giving a nod to the way God has gotten the people through tough times of struggle. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The writer celebrates the joy that the people now enjoy with laughter in their mouth and shouts of joy on their tongues. And the psalmist acknowledges that these blessings come from God with these words. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. But then at the end, the writer admits that times weren't always so joyful for them. There were times when tears watered the crops they sowed and that they wept as they carried their seed to be planted. This is likely because the sowing was being done in exile and they longed to be home. And for many of us, this Thanksgiving feels like a bit of an exile in a long year of exile. We've been exiled from the way things used to be when we could come and go as we pleased, assemble without fear of catching something, and smile broadly without a mask to hide it. We've temporarily lost these things. And so you might say our sowing this year has also been accompanied by tears. But we have a promise from God that this will not last forever. The exile of God's people is not permanent. We, like God's people of old, will come again with joy, shouldering our sheaves. But for now, as we abide in this in-between time, this shadow time of family get-togethers via Zoom and of empty chairs and empty hearts, we too can know the joy of the Lord even now because God has chosen to abide with us wherever we are. God took on human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ so that God could sit with us 
in the midst of our loneliness and fear. And so even if no one else is seated physically with us at a table this Thanksgiving, we can still find, if not joy, then at least solace in the fact that God is always with us. So why not set a place for Christ at your Thanksgiving table today? Whether you're alone or with others today, why not use the words of Psalm 126 to reflect on the blessings that are yours, your life, people who love you and who need your love, food to eat, a safe, warm bed to sleep in, and most of all, the blessing of the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who dries all our tears and gives us a harvest of peace and joy as he abides in our hearts. Will you pray with me now? Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for all the blessings you've given me. This has been a hard year, Lord, you know that. But I know that you've seen all of us through it and that your love will sustain us always. We grieve over the things and people we've lost this year, but we know that our loved ones are safe at home with you and we know that you walk with us through this crazy time we're living through. You have made your dwelling place in our hearts and that is reason enough for us to be thankful. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us and Pastor Bruce and I pray that you will have a very blessed Thanksgiving.